Good morning. I'm Steve from Steve's Great Finds. I'm about to go treasure hunting. Uh, if you don't know anything about Steve's Great Finds, we are an online vintage clothing store. We specialize mostly in vintage jerseys, vintage jackets, vintage hats, and vintage shirts from sports teams. Uh, we do find other vintage things, Hawaiian shirts, Harleys, other vintage t-shirts, and when we find them, we just post them. That's the great finds. But we are a sports, vintage sports online business. Um, before I go treasure hunting, I always have a story to share with you. It's going to be a short one today. And then I come back, I show you my finds, which are always, I find phenomenal. I get really excited about it. And then I'll drop some knowledge on, on the end. And the knowledge that I'm going to drop usually has to do with something about story time. Like I said, the story time is pretty short today, but it has to do with this jersey right here. This is the city, this is the Warriors jersey. Um, if you, from a distance you can see, it's signed. It's signed by one of my favorite Warriors of all time. And no, it's not Steph Curry. And no, it's not Thompson, Clay Thompson. Um, this, I'm an older guy, I'm almost 60, so I like the old school Warriors back before they were really good. Um, World Be Free was one of my favorite Warriors, and this guy right here, um, Chris Mullins. And, and I love this warm-up. It's the first warm-up I'm gonna have framed, but it was a great find. And my business is about selling and making money. And But every once in a while, I find items that I want to hang on for myself. This is one of the items. I'll take it someplace, I got a framing shop that does all my framing, so all my frames look alike. I'll put it in my office or in my den, wherever I, uh, right now my office is where most of my basketball jerseys are going. Don't have a lot yet. Um, I do have a Magic Johnson, I do have a, a Michael Jordan, and I do have a Dennis Rodman autograph, and I have a LeBron. Um, that's not an autograph jersey, but it's a first day issue um, letter from the post office that has LeBron James draft, so it's pretty cool. Uh, when I go vintage shopping, I don't know about most of you, but I seem to find three to five autographed jerseys a month. Um, this month, I don't think I've, I, maybe I found one or two. I think I found an Omar Gossipara, and I just found an old vintage um, uh, Indianapolis Colts uh, champion that was signed by four players. Um, but they weren't well-known players. But in the drop the knowledge section, what I'm gonna share with you is how I handle selling autographs. There's a lot of fakes out there, but there is a really good way to make this profitable. It costs a little bit more money, but it's not that expensive, and it helps. I just sold one of my autograph jerseys yesterday that I had this done to. I sold a James Thrash, um, and when I, you'll just have to stay tuned. I got some knowledge to drop on you, how I handle it, how I make it profitable, and how I keep my business reputable with my autographs. Um, so many fakes out here, so many fakes. So I'm about to go treasure hunting. Um, shout out to my boy, Joe Hollinsworth, great friend back in Dyersburg, Tennessee, and uh, we're about to hit it, let's roll. All right. I'm back from uh, treasure hunting again. Went by myself today, one place. And again, bunch of jackets. Found one really awesome football jersey. Uh, right now it's just jacket time, man, but it's good. I've been selling three or four a day. So I have spots, as you can see. I don't know if you can see my cabinets, but that is just one of three cabinets just totally full of jackets. These are my nylons. And then I've got a few jackets scattered in my other things but I've been selling them so that's good right so I can be picky found a lot of um, great ones today it's about about 45 today I'll show you about a little over half of what I bought got some already being washed got some other ones sitting aside so here we go I'll show you some things that we don't find very often this is the uh, old Honda um, Roadrunner racing okay we know this is authentic because of the tag inside. It's not a, not a knockoff tag, it's the actual tag. It's a great, great hoodie. Um, these are hard to find. Um, I've never found a hoodie. I've found other things of theirs. Um, 
you're looking at 75 to 90 dollars for something like this um, it's a great great thing i'll probably put up for auction tomorrow and uh, see where it goes if you watch me i love these these uh dugout jackets the majestic authentics um the yankees are the ones that seem to sell the fastest but the red sox go i sold two uh two of these this week this has got the american flag patch on it it's a great patch so i scoop these up all the time they sell for um between 65 and 75 dollars so they usually go pretty fast this is another one this this also has a usa patch on them and then it also has the socks patch on the other side so these are great jackets and then i got a tigers the Tigers doesn't have a USA patch, but uh, like I said, I find Red Sox and Yankees. If I get a Yankees one, it's sold within a day. The Red Sox will sell within a week. And then the other ones, um, depending. I had a Royals one, if you remember last week, it sold really fast. And I still have a White Sox still sitting there, but they will sell. I got a nice vintage Spurs jacket. It's got the old tag in it. It's got a great, great graphics on the back I'll probably also put it up for auction and see where it goes I got a whole bunch of starters not the satin nylons but the windbreakers they sell anywhere between 40 and 75 depending on what team you have and the buyer some are harder to find but I'm just gonna run through them real fast some of them have the hoodie in the back it's a fold-in hoodie and then some of them have a zip-up hoodie that push you in this is Penn State I try to buy the ones with the graphics, some kind of graphic in the back. Carolina Panthers. This is not a hoodie, but it's a light windbreaker. Chicago Bulls. The pullover. Nice. Again, some of them are hooded, some of them aren't. Kansas State. This doesn't have the graphics on the uh, back, but it's uh, one hard to find, so I bought it my favorite out of all of them this is the half zip the man is the Seattle supersonics nice color nice graphics in back I'll probably put this up for auction again the starter authentic you don't find too many supersonic stuff so it's great I got a Dolphins it's got nice graphics in the back like I said I tried to buy the ones with the graphics in the back like the, the ones I don't are the ones I've never you don't see it very much you know they're around Oh, this is the Eagles. It's got the hood. It's got the zip-up hoodie that comes off. It doesn't just fold in. Great graphics in the back. Um, my Eagles, my last one sold for $75. It's a great jacket. Might put it up for auction too. Let's see what happens. This is the Florida State. This is the pullover. Don't buy a lot of pullovers, but lately they've been selling, so I, I picked up a few this week. Cowboys. Nice color, nice graphics, the starter pro line. I like the pro line the best. This is another Penn State. I bought this one because of the, gra the neatly line on the back. Love the graphic on this one. Um, it's the same size as the other one, so I might sell two for one. We'll see what happens. This is the Braves. Another nice one. It's the pullover half, half zip starter. This isn't a starter, but Come on, Memphis Tigers. I was a big Tigers fan. I lived back in Memphis for around 26 years. A lot of my boys still live out there. My children live out there. Shout out to all my friends and family out in, around the Memphis area. Um, big Tigers fan back in Jalen Rose and all of them took it. Um, JB, you know, the Wildcats knocked them off. The Wildcats are always great in, in basketball, but the Tigers, um, I just love it. Uh, I don't think it's my size, otherwise it might stay with me. It's an XL, so maybe I'll wear it and uh, see what happens I, I, when I go back to see everybody. Love it. Here's a chalk line. This is the Yankees. Now, it's not lined, but like I said, I love the chalk lines that are stitched in the back. Um, represent front and back. This one's great. Um, I like the line ones better. Man. The Yankee stuff with the big old name in the back and the chalk line in front, it's 
great nylon. And I told you, buy things that you've never seen before. Um, the Skull Racing Bandit, um, but it's in that nylon. It's It's got two color tone. I don't know, I'll have to take, so hopefully the pin won't leave a hole in it. But I like this way. And I got a couple Swingsters. Um, I don't buy a lot of Swingsters unless they're great teams. Um, I love the Celtics. This one's got great color. Nothing in the back, but not everybody likes everything. Some people just like that, like they do a polo shirt, just have something really small. It's nice and stitched, but the colors are Celtics green, so it's good. And the same thing with the Boston Bruins. You don't see a lot of Boston Bruins um, nylons out there. So a lot of fans, a lot of hockey fans. So this one will go to. Here's one of my favorite finds of the week. This is the Red Sox. This is the nylon, but look at the tag. That is great. It's it's the old uh, Twin Enterprise. They're really good on the uh, um, hats. So never seen a jacket like this. So I'll put it up for auction. Um, I'll research it a little bit. Never had a Twin Enterprise jacket. Sold their hats before. Um, so I'm sure there's a fan base out for that. Bought one of these a couple weeks ago. Sold it. Uh, this one's uh, also large. Um, its graphics are a little more worn than the other one, but the colors are still fantastic. Um, I like these DeLongs. <laughs> um, takes a while to sell them, but I don't know. I just love the style of them and the color on them. Um, same with the Chiefs. Here's a Chiefs DeLong. Um, nice one. Great graphics on that one. Really lightweight, but they're just so, you can tell when someone's, if you like that vintage look, you can tell when someone's walking down with this. This isn't a modern thing. This is the, the color, the graphics are just fantastic. Of course, um, Super Bowl champs, um, not a big fan of them beating my 49ers, but uh, I love I love the graphics on this. And football's about to start up, so. I have no idea if this is vintage or new, but come on, Pepsi, five cents. It's probably newer, it's got the nice, tag on it i mean the pull tab on it that looks vintage i'm sure it's newer but it's a bigger size it's 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 pretty cool sometimes you just buy something because it looks cool how about the dodge boys the old dodge boys have more fun um had one of these not too long ago sold pretty fast this one's kind of great it's stitched um if you have an older truck this is a great jacket to wear with it right then I bought a few t-shirts and sweatshirts that are just older and vintage that just had a cool look to them. This is the Oregon Ducks 1996 Cotton Bowl. It's a Disney, it's the duck. Um, so it's a double promo. I don't know what the tag is Disney. It's just gear big cotton, but it's got Disney on it. So that's, that's great. I did buy a couple t-shirts that are just awesome. Here's my best find of the day period. This is the uh, starter pro line. Nice tag. This is the this is the really long one. This is Cordell Stewart. No name on the back, but it is stitched and it is fantastic shape. Um, I will put this up for auction. I'll start on Saturday to Saturday and see where it goes. They usually sell pretty fast, and I don't overprice my stuff, so I'll, it it will go. The auction might not even end. And then the T-shirts I bought, I just had to. This is the Washington Post Opus. Look, it's a perfect, perfect political shirt for right now, right? It says, this time, why not the worst, right? Why not vote for the worst? Uh, I'm not getting political, but this is the time to start wearing political stuff, so this is a great one. So this is the Notre Dame 1970 shirt. Look at it. This is shows how they dominated Alabama back in the 70s. Um, never seen a shirt like this before. Um, I'll probably ask $70, $75 for it. Um, it just shows their dominance of uh, Notre Dame. If you watched uh, last week or the week before, I bought, I found some um, a performance um, weightlifting uh, vintage uh, shirt. This is the this is a performance a vintage pants, red, white, and blue. Right, big guy. That's cool. So that's my finds. I'm gonna go take care of my dog because he's barking. My pool guy. Peace out. Watch uh, after this, and I've got some drops of knowledge on you about autograph jerseys. Later.
So I am done um, with my items. I've uh, washed most of them. I've measured most of them. I've taken pictures of most of them. I've de-wrinkled the ones I need to. I have already listed 35 of my 45, um, and it's evening time now, and it's time to wind down. And um, But the good thing is I've already sold um, four of my items that I've listed. I sold that Notre Dame um, vintage uh, t-shirt for, like I said, 75 bucks. Could have got more maybe. I should have maybe put it on auction. But something sells so fast that you've never seen before, you wonder, eh. But somebody got a great find, and I made the profit I needed to. Sold both of my Majestic Red Sox jackets. Usually takes three to seven days, but they both sold in one day. And then I sold that Skull Bandit um, nylon jacket, which was so cool. It went pretty fast. More than I thought I was gonna get out of it. Tested the market a little bit. So that was exciting. Um, I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you. And then after I drop some knowledge on you, I am going to um, spend a little time with my wife and then put her and the kids to bed and then I'll this is my final 10 items. Um, let me draw some a little extra knowledge on you. The reason why my business is so successful, I don't play around with my buys. When I buy, I clean, I take pictures, I measure, and I list. And my wife is really um, a great person because she realizes my buying day is my long day. I get up as early as five to six o'clock, and I don't usually get done till midnight, one o'clock. Um, days I buy more than 50 items, um, it's a two-day process because I just can't list that much in one night. It's just too hard, but I give it a shot. I try to take one solid day, and then I have six days to just sell, and I don't have to really draw out a lot. So the knowledge to make a business successful is you have to work hard to get your business to be successful. The harder you work, more successful you're gonna be. Thus, these YouTube videos right now, they really haven't broken, but I will not give up. Just like my eBay business when I started in 2011, my profit has 10 times from then. My business success, my buys, all the knowledge I have is at least 10 times greater. And so it's just a process and I'm willing to wait the process out. So in the story time, I told you about my Chris Mullins jersey and I, that I'm eventually gonna get it framed, but I won't get it framed until I get one thing done to it. The Redskins James Thrash jersey. It is a brand new jersey with tags. Not, it's a it's a vintage one, but somebody bought it for their collection. Got James Thrash to autograph it, and he has got a clean autograph, right? And then something happened, and it got lost in the shuffle. So this is one of my finds. I told you I find three to five autograph jerseys a month. Um, I, Probably found three already this month. I, I know I found a Nomar, I found a Dwight Gooden, and I believe I just found um, an old um, Colts, 1993, signed by four players. Um, none of them are um, stars, but the jersey is just awesome. So um, this is what I do. So if I'm gonna list it like this, what I write in my listing is bought from a local collector, no COA or paperwork. First of all, I can go online and I can pretty well tell this is James Thrash's real autograph, but I can't sell it. So basically with the, I, when I sell it like this, I sell it for the price of the jersey. When I had it listed with no CAA, no paperwork, I had it for $75. That's what this jersey would run. I probably would have took a little less. It's a great jersey, it's brand new with tags. It's, 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 it's vintage, it's got great graphics, okay? But what I did, if you look down here, I took it to the Long Beach Expo and they gave me this, all right? I took it there, the Long Beach Expo, PSA DNA shows up and they grade your cards and they authenticate your autographs. And so for a guy like James Thrash, it's only 20 bucks. Um, you can mail them in the PSA, I don't do that. I like to be there in person, it's kind of a cool little show every three months. Um, the problem is right now, because of the COVID, they are shut down right now. So my autographs are not getting PSA, um, and they're not getting authenticized. You can, like I said, I don't mail them in. It's too expensive that way. It takes too much time. Um, I just wait. 
So right now my jerseys that are autographed, I have, like I said, uh, bought from a local collector. No COAO paperwork and I got a lot less money into them. But I got a lot of jerseys like this. This one just sold yesterday to a guy who um, is in charge of where James Thrash went to college. Pretty excited about that. Um, because I had a PSA DNA, I jumped the price from 75 to 150 bucks asking price. Uh, you can get more out of something if you know it's real and it helps. So if you find autographs like I do, take the time, find a local um, expo or wherever PSA, you can go to their Google, you can website and they'll tell you when they're coming to your city. Usually every three months to Long Beach they do. Um, I'm sure there's a city close to you, they do the same thing. Get them graded. And that way you know they're real, and that way you can put them on your website and make a little bit more profit off them. They give you, they put the mark on your jersey, wherever you want it a lot of times. Um, I have a Gretzky um, that I'll show you the picture of here, and I got a couple other ones. Um, sometimes I'll put the PSA where you want it, and my Gretzky I have it um, on the back on a tag where you can't really see it when it's in the frame. Um, my Elway is the same way. It's on a champion tag on the other side, but my John Taylor is there. So it all depends what you want to do. You can, you can ask them to put um, the PSA sticker where people can see it. Um, that's up to you, but you need to tell them before they do it. <laughs> you know. So anyway, that's the knowledge I have to drop with you. I got a few more things to do. God bless. Peace out. Click subscribe. Later.